Welcome to Kingdom Come Now broadcast, brought to you by Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. We are an apostolic, prayer, healing, deliverance, and prophetic global ministry. And our overseers are Apostle and Prophets Dr. Kilafo Z. Kali, MD, and Shalewa Kali. Our ministry is built on the apostolic and prophetic model, and the foundation of our ministry is Jesus Christ and His Kingdom. Located in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Bahamas, the ministry celebrates 10 years of dedicated service. Parenthetically, our leaders also oversee Kingdom Apostolic Global Networks and have commissioned over 800 apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists in over 30 nations, including South, East, and West Africa, Asia, USA, Bahamas, and the Caribbean. Visit us at www.kamgbahamas.com. We are located at Nios Grace Center, West Atlantic Drive, Freeport, Bahamas. Let's go straight into the broadcast. Praise the Lord. God bless you. It's so good to see you. I'm Dr. Kilafo Kali, and uh, we are starting a wonderful new topic uh, concerning the kingdom of God. It's called Kingdom deliverance and the prophetic. I'm telling you, praise the Lord. What an awesome time we're going to have. I want you to sit back, call your friends, your family, and your loved ones concerning this message. We are going strictly into a very critical message Jesus taught, which is about the kingdom of God. Uh, I want you to get your notepad. See, the kingdom of God is the rulership of Christ. You've heard it, and we're going to dive into it. What does it mean to live in the kingdom of God? Jesus is God. He's Lord on the Psalm 145, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion is forever. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talks about seeking this kingdom. So I've spent the last uh, about 15 years just studying in depth the kingdom, sitting at the feet of men and women of God around the world, and reading and studying on this kingdom message, this kingdom teaching. I began to live it with my family. I began to teach it. I began to walk it out. And I'm telling you, since I've been seeking the kingdom, all things has been added. And I'm so delighted to be coming into your homes. Thank you for having us here at Kingdom Apostolic Ministry. Come into your homes or wherever you are listening and watching these teachings. It's been a joy for Shalewa and I and our family and the family here at the ministry. We bless God for you. We thank the Lord for you. Sit back, relax, learn the principles of the kingdom. Understand the deliverance. The deliverance Jesus has for us. And also, I want you to understand and watch the prophetic. I believe God is going to release a prophetic ministry upon you today. Direct word of the Lord for you and for your life and for your family and for you pastors and ministers listening and watching. God bless you. We love you and stay tuned. May you be blessed today. Every human being from every place around the world, seven billion, yes. you are a king, you are a priest, but you are loved because you are made by your Father, the Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, the Lord. He loves you, He cares for you, He wants you to be a king and a priest, He wants you to rule and reign in this earth, He wants you to have authority and power over the earth, over the flesh, over the sea, over the air, over the visible and invisible with its partnership. He doesn't want you being used by the kingdom of darkness. He doesn't want you destroying your body with drugs and alcohol and illicit sexual relationship. He doesn't want you to destroy your lives going after money and fame and fortune. He wants to bless you and make you a generational blessing that your children and your children's children and down the generation will live for the Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to tell the Muslim, we have to tell the Buddhist, we have to tell the atheist, we have to tell the Satanist, hallelujah, don't use the authority that you have by innate abilities. You are the inborn. Every child that is born has been born as the heritage of the Lord. They have been born with the image and the likeness of the Lord God. And they have within them the capacity to rule as kings. But if they come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, they will rule in this earth under the authority and the influence of the Holy Spirit. And they will bring about kingdom change. They will be a part of helping to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. So when you and I speak uh, as children of God, we are decreeing stuff. Yes. Amen. And it must be done. Amen. 
when we need to use the name of Jesus, it gives us double power. Then when we call on the priest, the high priest, Jesus Christ, and we say in the name of Jesus, priests also decree things. Hallelujah. When the priest in the Old Testament laid hands on that animal and said, I'm putting all the sins of the people there, and he released them, it was so. Amen. When, when they said, go show yourself to the priest, when Jesus healed the leper, he said, go show yourself to who? The priest. The priest. When the priest examined, he said, you clean? Or he said, no, you're unclean. you got to be quarantined. Hallelujah. When they went to the priest to sort out matters, who did they go to? The Pharisees and Sadducees. They studied the scripture. Who were they? They were priests. Hallelujah. And they came and said, okay. Hallelujah. When they called the woman in adultery, who did they, they brought her before? The priests. And the priest said, this one is guilty. Stone this one. Keep this one alive. Hallelujah. When there were land disputes, when there were disputes of uh, uh, anything related to the law, look in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus is the book that deals with the priestly nature of the believer back in the old time of Israel. But it also tells us about now. Hallelujah. Do you know that laws around the world were developed out of the book of Exodus and Leviticus? Amen. Do you know the laws of countries? They didn't just pop them out of their head. Most of them were built out of the book of Leviticus, how to deal with, I'm looking at it now, penalty for death, hallelujah, pen and law and ordinances for priests, Leviticus 21 and chap chapter 22, the feast of the Lord, how to worship, how to do the burnt offering, how to do the sacrifices, praise God, I think you got the picture by now. Amen. Revelation, now let's come back to Revelation chapter 6. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. Isn't that beautiful? Look how beautiful heaven is. Yeah, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Praise God, if you think you've been to the zoo and you've seen all the animals, you have a big surprise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some animals in heaven that you have not even seen yet. Hallelujah. My God, when we were, uh, I think South Africa, we saw some new animals, some new creatures, some new things that you never even saw and existed before. Hallelujah. If we touch on the giraffes, saw some lions, hyenas. My God, all kind of beautiful new things that you never thought even existed for real hippos. And, my God, Amen. my God, trees. But listen here, my wife loves National Geographic. Sometimes she puts it on there and we're seeing all kind of new funny looking stuff in the Amazon and the Arctic Circle. All these beautiful creatures. Come on. Hallelujah. The Lord has made so many species Amen. of fish, of birds, yes. of animals. Some of the smallest mammals, some of the smallest fish, some of the smallest birds, some of the smallest lizards. All kind of wonderful things. Our God is so awesome. Yes. Hallelujah. In heaven, he has some created beings there. You and I have not even seen yet. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Watch this, verse 7. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man. Mighty God. <laughs> My God, it's a beast with the face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. This is the part I wanted us to see. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of what? Eyes within. Can you imagine something with eyes all over it? Mighty God. Maybe I, the closest thing I can think of is a peacock. But all those beautiful looking things that look like eyes on its, hallelujah, fins or whatever you call it, veil. Feathers. And they rest, now this is what I want us to see. And they rest not day and night saying what? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who lived forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. And they cast their crown, crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. Mighty God. Amen. Bless the Lord. You pray for me today. Watch this now. So what this is saying, people of God, is that in heaven there is a few things. Number one, there is order. Number two, there is beauty. 
Number three is the throne of God that's seated there. Upon that throne is the Lord. He's beautiful like a jasper and solid stone. I want you to go home and read up exactly what that stone looks like. Uh -huh, it's beautiful. Round about his throne there's an emerald. Hallelujah. That's like a, a rainbow. Hallelujah. There are 24 elders. Look at here. You can imagine one throne there and all of these chairs all around. The throne of God there, the elders. And then these wonderful, hallelujah, wonderful beast-looking things, Amen. hallelujah, flying around. And day and night, night and day, some of us get tired worshiping God for half hour. Amen. Imagine that's what they do 24-7, all of eternity. Yes. yes, amen. From the beginning, from when they were first created to now. Eternity upon eternities, upon eternities, upon Amen. eternities. There's no time. They don't get tired. That's their job. They just worship. Worship Amen. holy, 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 holy. Come on, you say it. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God Almighty, which was it is and is to come. Both now and forever. Holy, 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 People of God, when you get tired, I believe they never get tired because they keep worshiping. I believe they never get weary because they keep worshiping. I believe they never get sick because they keep worshiping. I believe they never get frustrated because they keep worshiping. I believe they don't fall into sin because they keep worshiping. If you and I would worship, we wouldn't get tired. If we would worship the King of Kings, we wouldn't get weary. If we worship the Lord of Lords, Praise the Lord. Holy, Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. Which was and is and is to come. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Which was and is and is to come means there is no eternity. Amen. You know why? Because we was. When, when, when we was. When we were born. Amen. When the sperm and egg came together. That's when we was. And is, we are now. Is made to be now. <clears throat> but in the human life, we come to an end. But the Lord continues to come. Amen. He was and is and is to come forever. <clears throat> then the elders bow down, take up their throne, and worship Him. They give Him glory and honor and power. It's not that they give him it, because he has all power. But what they're doing is giving representation and respect and honor to the fact that he has all glory, honor, and power. And they are decreeing. Amen. See, see, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. It's not that God, see, God, listen, here, if we are inside to say, I'm going to make some statements. Even if we don't worship him, God is being worshiped by the heavenlies 24-7. Even if they never worship him, he's God all by himself. Amen. He has all power. Amen. He has all glory. He has all strength. He has all wisdom. He has all knowledge. He has everything built in him. He is everything. And in everything he is. That's why when Moses came to him and Moses said, Who do I say sent me? He said, Tell them I am that I am. Jehovah sent. Amen. I believe it's something when we decree, when we declare, when we worship Amen. the Lord, miracles happen in our lives. Yes. When we declare him as a healer, healing flows in, his, in our lives. Amen. If you need healing, you need to declare, Lord, you are my healer. Yes. Lord, you're my healer. Yes. Lord, you're my deliverer. If you need a miracle, Lord, you're my miracle worker. Yes. Rainmaker, miracle worker. Hallelujah. So not sign that song. Hallelujah. But we need to declare, he is healer. He is deliverer. Hallelujah, you are my fortress, huh? you are my help, huh? you are my provision. Amen. Whatever you decree as a king, whatever you believe, decree as a believer, that's what comes in your life. When you decree who he is in your life, that's what he becomes. That's why the Israelites knew this. They know when they needed provision, he became what? Jehovah Jireh. When they needed help, they call it Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah, or Rafi. Hallelujah. When they needed a uh, hallelujah, um, him to deliver, they call him Jehovah Tiskandu. When they needed sanctification, when they needed redemption, Jehovah our Redeemer. 
Hallelujah, glory to God. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah our Lord, our banner, the one that goes before us and fights our battle. They knew what to call him. I wish we would call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. A word saying being healed, delivered, set free, delivered. We're talking about deliverance. Hallelujah. We're talking about the kings and priests. So we as people of God, hallelujah, that's what we need to understand. Now, why did I go through all of that? And there's more in Revelation. I went through that because I wanted you and I to see what's happening in heaven. Okay? So that when Jesus now says, seek the kingdom of God, this is what we should be seeking. Yes. Seeking the throne of God. So you can understand how he rules and reigns. So you can how he delivers. Not only that, Matthew chapter 6. I'm still talking about the end time ministry. Why? Because this is what we have to decree and declare. People of God, stay with me. Matthew chapter 6. Amen. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Master, teach us how to pray. <clears throat> and Jesus taught them and he said in Matthew chapter 6. And verse 7, he said, But when you pray, use not vain repetition and the heathens do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your heavenly Father knoweth what things you have need of before you even ask. Jesus said, You know what? To be honest, man of God, woman of God, people of God, this is going to change our understanding as kings and priests. Because yes. what do priests do? Pray. Yeah. If you are a priest, you pray. Amen. Why? And when you pray, you're representing God to the people and the people to God. We looked at this in the book of Exodus. The priest, hallelujah, would go once a year and a high priest into where? The Holy of Holies. And that high priest, which was the priest among the other priests, would make petition for his sins, what? First. Then he would make petitions for the sins of the what? People. Very good. So the priest would represent what? The people to God. First for himself, then for the what? People. Yeah. Then he would get the laws and teaching from God, go back to the temple and teach the people the laws of God. Amen, yes. So Moses was a type of king and priest. Melchizedek was a king and priest. Jesus is a king and priest. Because why? Jesus, when he decreed a thing, it happened. He is king of kings and lord of lords, but he is also a high priest. The book of Hebrews chapter 6 and 7, chapter 6 and 7 said, We have a high priest who is touched by the very feelings of our infirmity. Jesus Christ, the high priest who went into the holy once. He went into the holy place once. He didn't want to make petition for his sin and because he was without sin. Amen. And he doesn't have to make petition every time into the holy place because he made partition for us. He paid the price. He made that sacrifice with his own blood, with his own self. He is the Lamb of God. He is the sacrificial Lamb of God. Through his blood, through his sacrifice on the cross, he paid the price once and for all for the sins of every man throughout every generation who would accept him. Amen. His blood would wash. Even if they don't accept him, the blood is already being paid for. Amen. That's right. Salvation for every human being. Yes. Don't tell me God is not angry and hurt when people reject his very blood. That very blood that he paid, that is made available. People don't know, hallelujah, praise God. People are going to hell, sadly, and we got to pray. We got to preach. We got to teach as priests of God. We got to get this world to know about the kingdom of God, about the king, about the blood of Jesus, about the cross of Christ that is able to save, heal, and deliver them and bring them into their kingdom. Priest. Yes. My God. Well, how could a good God... People would ask, send people to a terrible hell. Well, that answer is easy now. First of all, he doesn't send them to hell. They go to hell on their own choice. Yes. Secondly, he has made every provision necessary for every child born into this world from Adam to, to this day Amen. to receive through the knowledge 
of the blood of Jesus, salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, especially since he came and died, every human has the opportunity through his blood from his that point to now. So Jesus now, stay with me. Amen. Jesus now begin to talk about this kingdom that we saw in Revelation 4. This beauty, this order. What I didn't tell you is the order, the magnificence, the splendor, the glory, the righteousness, the sinlessness. Say sinlessness. Sinlessness. There's no sin in heaven. There are no devils and demons in heaven. They were kicked out. Oh my God. They were kicked out. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. They were kicked out in Revelation chapter 12. I want you to read that. They were kicked out in Revelation chapter 4. So there's no demons, no devils. Satan, who was originally Lucifer, was kicked out. Amen. And sent to the earth. But one third of the angels who are now, hallelujah, unclean, foul spirits. Their job is to try to block people from having an understanding of this kingdom of heaven. So Jesus now said to his disciples, which he is saying to us as kings and priests, now this is where I'm going. We got to decree this thing. Watch this. Stay with me. Jesus said, but when you pray, verse 9, after this manner therefore pray, Matthew 6 and verse 9, pick it up, read it with me, what does it say? After this manner therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in what? Heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, what? Come. Thy will be, what? Done in earth as it is in heaven. Stop right there. Jesus spends most of this part, this model of this pattern of prayer. Now this will help you or this will hurt you. Praise God. If you're open to hearing the truth of God's word, this is going to help you. Amen. But if you're stuck in religious and you, you're being taught how to come, oh Lord, thank you Lord. Yeah. Now that's good, but the Holy Ghost come on me. I'm a bone and groan and pray. Hallelujah. But the more I grow in the kingdom, the more I say, okay, Holy Ghost, let me catch myself. Hold on now. Now when I start praying the kingdom, if you move on me and I got to moan and groan and intercede in the spirit, I will do that because yeah. I've, done, I've done that. But Jesus said, hey, 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 just sit back. When you open your mouth, realize that you are kings and priests. Yes. Now Jesus said, before you go into asking me for stuff, because I already told you, Jesus said, in that same Matthew 6, 31, 34, don't worry about what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. Do you not know that most people spend most of their lives Amen. worrying about what they're going to buy for grocery, what they're going to get for breakfast, or where they're going to find lunch, what they're going to get for dinner. I got to get to the grocery store. Hallelujah. Yes. Most people spend time and money Shopping online, shopping in stores, clothes, looking at the latest fashions. And that's good. God wants to enjoy these things. Don't get me wrong. I love the shop too. But I'm learning more and more. God is telling me that I'm spending less time shopping. In fact, I've stopped spending a lot of time shopping for many years. Sometimes I just say, babe, I tell my wife, oh, I just go to a place I want this, this, this. Boom. Get out. That's how men shop. Women shop differently. Praise God. If the Lord is treating you, don't let me stop you. Go and enjoy yourself. But Jesus said, don't let that consume your life. Don't think, don't take thought for tomorrow. Some of you here listening, watching, stop. Just, just stop for a minute. I know you got a lot of stuff to do. I got stuff to do too, but just stay some time in the kingdom. Amen. Let this kingdom message refresh you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, don't think, don't take no thought for these things. Make the kingdom your priority. Amen. So Jesus in teaching what we call this prayer, the Lord's Prayer. I don't like to call it the Lord's Prayer because the Lord didn't need this as a prayer. He knew this. He was teaching this. It's really the, the, the disciples' prayers. 
Because the disciples came to him and said, what? Lord, teach us how to pray. Uh-huh. Teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, very good. I'm happy you asked me. You know, a lot of Christians think they know how to pray. Uh-oh. A lot of believers think they know how to pray. Amen. We just thought we heard someone pray years ago, and we, we stopped doing that same path. If they hoop, yeah. we hoop. If they say, Lord God, we say, Lord God. Yes. And we say, Amen, oh, Amen, oh, Amen. Oh, we say that too. Amen. We learn these things. We don't think we learn them. But just from the ministries and praise God, we bless God for those people who pray that way. At least we learn how to pray somehow. But when you come into the kingdom of God, you come to the revelation of God's holy kingdom and what he's trying to say in the earth. And he knows now when you come into the understanding of knowing, hey, I'm a king and a priest. I have authority and power in Jesus' name, Amen. by the blood of Jesus, and I'm a part of the glorious church of Jesus Christ around the world, and I know who I am in God, I know who I am in Christ, because he died, and he sent his Holy Spirit in me, and I'm seated with him in heavenly places, and I'm a royal priesthood, I'm a holy nation, I'm a peculiar person, I'm called forth to show the praises of him who called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that Jesus said, it is my good pleasure in the book of Luke to give me the kingdom. And I began to see myself in the scripture. And I began, I'm more than just a little old Christian. But I'm a kingdom person. I have kingdom authority. You have kingdom power. That wants you to create. Behold, I have given you the keys of the what? Kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be what? Bound in heaven. Whatever you bind, whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Praise the Lord. I told you you were going to be blessed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you are continually blessed. And I pray that this ministry here at Kingdom Apostolic Ministry has really touched you. This message was something else. I want you to stay tuned for the next program, the next part of this message. It's going to get better. It's going to keep going. Stay with us. Love us. Email us. Contact us. Let us know about you. We'd love to hear from you. I'd love to pray for you. Pray for your family. If we can, pray for your ministry, your business, anything concerning your life. God bless you. See you again in the next uh, Kingdom Now program. Amen. You were listening to Kingdom Come Now broadcast, brought to you by Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International, where the leaders are Apostle and Prophets, Dr. Kilafo Kali, MD, and Shalewa Kali. If this message was a blessing to you, or you would like to partner with us and make a donation, contact us at telephone 1-242-352-2130, or email us at kamgbahamas at gmail.com. Visit our website at www.kamgbahamas.com. We are located at Nios Grace Center, West Atlantic Drive, Freeport, Bahamas. Be blessed and join us again soon for another Kingdom Come Now broadcast.